We're inside a 2018 GMC Arcadia with dual air conditioning. It has the rear AC ports up there on the ceiling, as you can see, right behind me. And my intention on these videos that you've been seeing me releasing pressures and temperatures and stuff is because many of you out here have no schooling, you don't have access to a trade school, did not have high school auto shop, uh, did not take uh, any HVAC classes. And there's no way you can really learn on a job when you work at a general uh, shop that does tires and brakes and tune-ups and all, you know, a whole thing, a uh, mess of stuff. And you have six technicians and you're going to divide up the air conditioning work amongst several dis different technicians. So one person cannot get enough jobs of just doing air conditioning so they could get good at it nevertheless you're adding in you have toyota mazda ford chevy chrysler occasional mercedes and when you have all this the pressures and the temperatures and the ac systems they operate differently they're similar but some have some odd way of operating that doesn't follow the rules and this is the problem you got to know when they don't follow the rules Okay, here's a dual AC system. I'm not going to hook up gauges on the rear. I don't have time, but I would like to take at least one shot today. Uh, this is my only video for today because that's all the time I have. I'm going to a place I don't want to go to called Arcadia because somebody wants me to look at an HVAC system over there and it's going to be 107 degrees. It's 106 degrees right now over there, um, which is an hour drive from here. So let's take a look at this. It's 84 degrees outside right now. My dry bulb outdoor temperature gauge, which is the little thermistor, is sitting in the front of the grill of the vehicle outside. That's where I'm taking this temperature of 79 degrees. Right now I have, I'm at idle. I'm in recycle mode. As you can see, I'm in recycle mode. It's cold in the car, so I have very little load on the evaporators. They just changed the rear evaporator. I did a video on this last week or a couple days ago. Uh, they, they had to remove the rear evaporator out of the quarter panel to do some sheet metal repair work. So now I just charge it up. So now look at the pressures. Look at the temperatures. I have 39 degrees coming out of this temperature right here at this dash point. We got 39 degrees. Outdoor, I have 90 degrees, but I am not sucking in that air from outside. Uh, right now, I'm just recycling inside, and it's only 50-some degrees. So there's very little load on these evaporators. Let me take, I'll take this, and I'll put it right here. Let's see what we get right here. Okay. Now, the colder one, the colder one will be farther back there, but I'm not going to reach back there. I'm just going to do this right here. So as you can see, I only got 77 degrees there, and I'm pretty sure I have that rear on. 77 degrees is not good. 79 degrees. I got to check the rear. Uh, the technician may have left. There, we were 81, 82. Okay. It looks like I, ha I just found a problem. Unless I don't have it on. I got sink. Is that sink front? 88 that's almost like the heater is on so he pulled out the rear box and I'm pretty sure okay that is on. that's on right now I'm, I'm testing out the controls back here come on can you read that let's see temperature I have temperature on low I have it to face I have the fan speed up high for this is for the rear we're looking at the rear right now and there's a problem let's see what this problem is and this is why you test everything you don't just test the front and say yeah it's cold it's 39 degrees out of the front and you're good to go because check this out I have it set for maximum cold on the rear and something is not right in Denmark Let's see what we got. So I'm pulling out 
that's that's warm that feels like heater core i have like heater core air coming out of here all right let's see what's happening guess we get to do a little bit of that live diagnostics and um i'll do some simple stuff and let him know he already has all the seats and the rear trim panel and everything put together he won't be happy when i tell him if he might have to take everything apart so this is live on the job finding problems all right so what we're gonna do because i don't want to bend down and here's here's the gauge readings right here oh i can't reach it back there and as you can see here let's take a look at this suction line temperature 50 degrees it's very hot down here and i have no insulation around my my sensor thank god the the exhaust manifold is over here so radiant heat is not so bad over there but it is hot so it won't give me too bad of a, a false reading of a few degrees higher but so let's come to this rear quarter panel so this piece of this piece of sheet metal back here was replaced if you remember from the video last week or earlier this week there was a big hole right here so this was replaced and the inside sheet metal was replaced Let's open this up. And so as you can see, this has all been put together. If his problem is a connector inside here or something, he had to take apart the case and everything, he's not going to be happy because he's going to have to take this all apart again. So let's find out what's going on here. So now what I'm going to try to do is get my hands up on, here's the exhaust right here, that's the muffler. I'm trying to find the line so I could grab it with my hand. There's the line, I see it right there. I want to grab it with my hand and prove that there is refrigerant flow. And if it's a cold line and we have hot coming out, that means we have okay what am i feeling here i think i'm feeling oh that's hot as hell okay so that is okay i put my hand on a line that's right up here that you could barely see because i don't have the light on sorry um that feels like coolant oh shit <laughs> and i'm burning myself hitting the exhaust put my head in water okay we're definitely looking for a problem and I'm trying to find access to a line thank you Arcadia for not making it too easy okay here we go we might be lucky yes okay I'm putting my hand on this line this line feels to me about 65 degrees I have a line here that's 65 degrees, but I have 80 plus degrees coming out of the vent. Then putting my fingers right behind there, I could feel the liquid line. That is about room temperature. That's about correct. So I should have cooling. We have heater flow. So what that tells me is that the evaporator is cool. There's some operation going on there. But I also put my hands on the heater line Got all my hair wet. Uh, my back of my head just went into that puddle of water from the muffler. So I put my hands on the heater pipe and the heater pipe is hot. So I'm having flow of hot coolant going back to the heater core back here. So he has some take apart and some work to do on his work uh, after he put it all back together uh, because we got hot air coming out from mixing with hot and cold so there you go uh, for you guys who don't have you don't need tools you don't have to have no fancy gauges for taking temperatures you your fancy gauge is right here in the gray matter between your ears you just use logic if a evaporator is cold you should have cold coming out of your ducts so in here I think the duct work comes here and the duct work transfers up here and then it splits out to the different uh, vents 
So if you have a cold suction line, you have a cold evaporator. If your room temperature air within your cabin is going through a cold evaporator, then you should not have 80 degrees up at the top up there. And if you put your hand on the heater core and you feel hot coolant going through it, that tells you where your heat's coming from, especially if the temperature of your vent is coming out hotter than ambient, then you know you're adding a little heater core and you know you have cooling. So they got to fix a problem there. I'm going to have to let them know they have a little work to do and I'll let them figure that out. But we have a good 39 degrees coming up uh, out the center vent right there. Now let's do another thing. I'm going to put this under a load and why, okay, my battery timed out. So we're at 64, 164 PSI. Let's put this under a little load. Let's open up all the doors. Let's take this out of recycle mode so we can get that hot engine heat like we're traveling somewhere really hot, 90 degrees. I'm gonna open up everything. And let's see how the AC responds because this is how you wanna know how your AC responds when it's hot under full load. Being in ideal conditions like this, here we are, it's a, pretty, a warm day, 84 degrees outside, but we're in the shade, it's cooler in here, and I had it on recycle. You don't want it on recycle, shade, uh, a cool interior, because that's not stressing the system. You wanna stress the system. So here's a situation where we're stressing the system. I know for a fact the air going down in, being drawn down. Here I could feel it blowing out from the big fan. This fan is like 21, 24 inch fan. This fan is huge. So this fan is blowing hot radiator heat and condenser heat in this direction. It's hitting the exhaust manifold, picking up some more heat, blowing in this direction. And because I have the hood up and it's a cooler day, because we're only like in the shop, I think it's what is in the shop temperature? In the shop is 79 degrees, 84 degrees outside, but we have 90 degrees going right down there because I could read it. Right there, 99 degrees. So this is like trying to cool off 99 degree heat. So you can see our temperature went from 164 only to 170 and I have all the doors open and I'm not on recycle no more. On this vehicle, it barely made of a difference. Okay, that's because of the type of compressor and the size of the, the condenser in this thing. The condenser in this thing literally goes from way up here all the way down here, way over. And this thing, it's a monster condenser with a 24 inch fan. Uh, dual AC system. So, on this system, it barely made any difference. If you see my video from the other day on like some of the Mercedes and some of the older Japanese or American cars, if I were to put it on fresh air mode, bring in 100 degree air, 90 degree air through there and have everything open like this, you would see say 270 PSI, almost 300 PSI on a hot day with 100 degree air going in and out. But look at this car, only 169. Same operating conditions, but yet the system, the variable control compressor, everything is trying to take over for what it was programmed to do. Not for you to go by pressures, sticking in cans, trying to raise the pressure until you think it is right. The system in this is taking over, changing the pressures, compensating. And this you can't go by guesstimating by cans or if they did give you a sight gas by bubbles on this one. And we went from 39 degrees to only 42, 42 degrees. We have a 58 degree split across the evaporator. That's a good evaporator. That's a good condenser. Everything is working good other than the heat coming out of the back. So that's my only one video for today. And I might post it today. And that's about it. Uh, I got to get out of here because I got more jobs to do and it's a hot day and I'm getting a lot of calls. 
see you. Bye.